Morning light drifts through a gray ocean mist. Fishing boats ease across the Bay of Biscay, their nets cutting dark lines through the water. In the hills above, stone farmhouses rise from the fog, their walls heavy with centuries of weather. The air carries a quiet permanence, as if time itself moves more slowly here. This is Basque country, a small, rugged corner of Europe where Spain and France meet. Its people, the Basques, may trace their ancestry back more than 7,000 years, making them among the oldest continuous populations in Europe. Long before Celts or Romans, before the Indo-European tongues that now blanket the continent, the Basques were already here, farming, fishing, speaking a language no outsider could understand. Their words, Euskara, belong to no known linguistic family. Their DNA forms a cluster apart from all neighboring peoples. For centuries, this mystery gave rise to legend that the Basques were Europe's first people, untouched by later migrations. But recent discoveries suggest something subtler, not isolation, but endurance, a population shaped by time, yet still carrying the ancient echoes of the first Europeans. To uncover how a people this old could remain so distinct, the search begins with the one relic that never fossilized, their language. Basque, or Euskara, is unlike any other European tongue. Every language surrounding it, Spanish, French, even distant Celtic, descends from Indo-European roots. Euskara does not. Its grammar bends differently. Its words form from older logic. There are no linguistic cousins, no family to trace across maps or migrations. For over a century, linguists have searched for a link to ancient Iberian inscriptions, to the Caucasus, even to North Africa. Each theory flickers briefly, then fades under scrutiny. The structure of Euskara remains stubbornly singular. Roman chroniclers once described a people whose speech was beyond comprehension. That remark, written nearly 2,000 years ago, may still hold true. Yet the endurance of this language suggests something deeper than isolation. It implies continuity, a voice carried forward through conquests, plagues, and modern borders. If words have survived untouched, could the same be true of bloodlines? To test the myth of separateness, scientists turned from language to the genetic code itself. When the first major Basque genetic studies were published in the late 1990s, they seemed to confirm the legend. Researchers found markers, particularly in the mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome, that appeared unusually distinct from neighboring populations in Spain and France. Headlines echoed an old claim, Europe's last original people. But as genome sequencing advanced, the narrative began to fracture. Larger data sets revealed that the Basques were not untouched relics of prehistory. Rather, they were descendants of early Iberian farmers who, after the Indo-European migrations, remained more genetically stable than others. The difference wasn't isolation alone. It was continuity amid waves of change. Traces of genetic drift and endogamy helped preserve older signals, amplifying the illusion of deep separation. Yet, newer findings showed subtle interactions, genetic footprints from neighboring groups, evidence that borders were never absolute. The mystery hadn't dissolved, it had evolved. The Basques were not a sealed remnant, but a living record of Europe's layered ancestry. To understand how this continuity survived, one must look beyond DNA, to the valleys and mountains that shaped who entered, who stayed, and who never left. In the foothills of the Pyrenees, archaeologists brush soil from the faces of ancient skulls, lives that ended thousands of years before written history began. The remains unearthed at sites like Atapuerca and Aispea trace a slow evolution from hunter-gatherers to early farmers. Their bones tell a quiet, stubborn story of endurance. Measurements of cranial form and limb proportion reveal continuity through millennia features echoing from Mesolithic hunters to present-day Basques. Even diet leaves its mark. Isotopic analyses show a pattern of mountain game, fish from northern rivers, 
and the first traces of barley cultivation. Material culture shifted, pottery styles changed, burial customs evolved, but not abruptly. Each transformation carried fragments of what came before, as if tradition itself resisted extinction. For scientists, the bones beneath these valleys blur the line between ancestry and adaptation. They prove not isolation, but persistence. A population changing just enough to survive, but never enough to disappear. If the people changed less than their world, perhaps the world itself protected them. The Pyrenees are not simply a backdrop. They are a boundary written in stone. For centuries, these steep valleys and narrow passes have done what armies could not. They have contained, deflected, and preserved. While Rome paved roads through the Alps and Gaul fell to empire, the Basque Highlands resisted absorption. Legions marched along the fringes, but rarely entered the heart of these ranges. Geography became both shield and filter, a terrain that demanded local knowledge, rewarding those who stayed, discouraging those who sought to rule. Even Caesar wrote of tribes beyond the reach of control. Isolation, over time, hardened into identity. Language and custom intertwined with the landscape itself. Each valley shaping its own dialect. Each ridge a silent wall against outside influence. It was not just geography that preserved the Basques, but the habits geography demanded. Self-reliance, caution, endurance. Yet physical barriers alone cannot explain how a culture stays whole. Belief and the myths beneath it would do the rest. Long before the crucifix appeared on Pyrenean peaks, the Basques told stories of Mari, a goddess who ruled the weather from her caves in the mountains. She was said to travel as a blazing light across the night sky, bringing both storms and fertility. In her world, every forest, stone, and stream had a spirit. When Christianity spread through Iberia, its priests found not resistance, but adaptation. The goddess was not erased. She was reinterpreted. Caves once used for pagan offerings became chapels. Festivals marking the seasons folded into Christian calendars. Beneath Latin prayers lingered the rhythm of older songs. Ethnographers in the 1800s recorded villagers still whispering to mountain spirits, blending faith with memory. What endured was not doctrine, but continuity an instinct to preserve what lay beneath each new layer of belief. In the Basque story, the sacred was never fully replaced, only renamed. That same instinct for endurance would one day harden again, not in faith, but in defiance. By the mid-20th century, the Basque story of quiet endurance met its hardest test. Under Francisco Franco's dictatorship, regional languages were forbidden Basque flags outlawed, and even children punished for speaking Euskara at school. A culture that had survived Romans and Visigoths now faced erasure from within its own country. Yet, beneath this silence, resistance grew. In hidden farmhouses and church basements, parents and teachers opened ikastolas, clandestine schools where Euskara was whispered and memorized like a prayer. Folk songs doubled as coded defiance. The same valleys that once shielded ancient bloodlines now sheltered language itself. When repression bred violence, the world saw only the conflict. But beneath headlines, the quieter truth endured. Basque identity had again chosen survival over surrender. Each word spoken in secret was an act of cultural archaeology, digging through suppression to reclaim continuity. As dictatorship faded, the weapons of history were replaced by new tools, microscopes and genome sequencers, turning rebellion into research. When ancient genomes from Iberian caves were finally decoded, they revealed a story written not in myth or politics, but in nucleotides. The Basques, long seen as isolated relics, were instead a bridge to early Europe. Their DNA held strong continuity with Neolithic farmers who arrived nearly 7,000 years ago, yet showed only faint traces of later Indo-European migrations. This meant the Basques had not stood apart from history. 
They had simply moved through it more slowly. Mutations and admixtures that reshaped Europe's genetic landscape appeared in Basque samples only lightly, as if filtered by the Pyrenees themselves. The Basques, one researcher notes, represent an unbroken thread, not pure, but persistent. The genome confirmed endurance, but also adaptation. Isolation had not frozen them in time. It had protected their variation long enough for us to read it. The data answered the scientific question, but it left one mystery untouched. What does persistence mean to the people themselves? For centuries, outsiders projected their own myths onto the Basques. To some, they were Europe's noble remnants, untouched by conquest. To others, an anthropological riddle, evidence of a forgotten race. Each generation reshaped the Basques to fit its idea of origin. In the 19th century, racial theorists claimed Basque skulls proved a link to Stone Age humanity. Later, nationalists invoked the same myths to argue uniqueness or superiority. Both missed the point. The Basques were never fossils of prehistory. They were participants in it, evolving alongside their neighbors. Modern research has replaced legend with continuity. The Basques did not stand outside history. They simply held onto its older layers longer than most. And so the film closes where it began, on the question not of who the Basques were, but of what truly endures. The Basques are no longer defined by mystery, but by persistence. Their valleys echo with a language once nearly erased, now taught to new generations. Fishermen launch boats from the same coves their ancestors used. Children speak Euskara into smartphones, carrying an ancient sound into a digital world. DNA, language, and culture, each once seen as proof of separateness, now form a portrait of continuity. The Basques did not remain unchanged. They endured through change. Geography shaped them, myth protected them, but time refined them. Perhaps mystery is not what resists explanation, but what quietly survives it.